Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Join with the nature in manifold witness To thy great faithfulness, mercy and love Great is thy faithfulness Great is thy faithfulness Morning by morning Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service. As you can see, we are here in Bury Brown Methodist, Methodist Church this week, which is where our service is on Sunday. So it's great to be with you here online as well. Our service will be a little bit of a mixture between our own service and the Methodist service, but it just makes it interesting, doesn't it? So let's worship God together. Welcome in the name of Christ, God's grace, mercy and peace be with you. So now we're going to sing our first hymn and our first hymn this morning is O oh, Worship the King. Let's sing this together.
together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so, as always, when we come to worship God, we need to give him those things that separate us from him, that stop us from having that right relationship with him. Maybe things that we've said and done or things that we've forgotten to do. So let's bring them to mind and just imagine laying them at the foot of the cross as we give them to God. And so we say together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be. That we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Thanks be to God. And so now we have our Gloria and this week we're singing the clapping Gloria. So let's sing this together. And our first reading this morning is read for us by Carol. The reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 5, verses 1 to 10. Every high priest is selected from among men 
and is appointed to rep represent them in matters related to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and not going astray, since he himself is a subject to weakness. This is why he has to offer sacrifices for his own sins as well as for the sins of the people. No one takes this honour upon himself. He must be called by God, just as Aaron was. So Christ also did not take upon himself the glory of becoming a high priest. But God said to him, You are my son. Today I have become your father. And he says in another place, You are a priest forever. In the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submissions. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered and, once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him and was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for that, Carol. Uh, and our second reading, our gospel reading, is read for us by Pam. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 10, verses 35 to 45. Hear the Gospel of Christ. James and John, the son of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one on your right hand and one on your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptised with the baptism that I am baptised with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptised, you will be baptised. But to sit at my right hand, or my left, is not mine to grant but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be very angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognise are the rulers, recognise are their rulers and lord it over them and their great ones, the tyrants, over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man cannot be served but to serve, and to give his life in a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of Christ. Thank you for that, Pam. Uh, and this week, I have an easy week. I'm not preaching this week. This week, it's David. So I'm going to hand over to him now. Back in 2005, Pam and I spent a month in Africa. Amongst the many wonderful things that we saw and experiences we had was attending church with the locals. I remember being in the cathedral in our twin diocese of Mara, and they even have two choirs. They each processed into church, singing and, of course, dancing too. The atmosphere was fantastic and their faith was palpable. Even Jesus would have been dancing in the aisles, an experience that we'll never forget. And as we drove around the country on Sundays, we would see people gathered outside the churches, dancing and singing, and expressing the faith in the most joyful ways. 
Last Tuesday, I heard the story of a newly ordained minister who went out to Africa to work for three years. Like we had been, he too was absolutely blown away with the faith and their enthusiasm and their energy, dancing and singing with such joy, bubbling over with the love of God and Jesus Christ. When he came back to England, he was given the parish in Yorkshire. In our youth, were we excited by our faith? Did we dance to the music and feel energised to go out and do God's will? Has there been a time in our lives when we were fervent Christians? Are we fervent today? Well, whatever your answer, would I be safe in saying that enthusiasm for many of us has tended to wane over the years? Perhaps it's impossible to keep up any level of excitement for 50 years. What can be difficult for us, first of all, is to admit to ourselves that's how we feel. And secondly, to be honest about our feelings with those around us. And the first thing I have to say about that is, and to myself as well, I guess, is that it's okay to feel this way. The, Christians, the Christmas carol would have us believe that it's the playing of the merry organ and sweet singing in the choir that encourages to come here every Sunday and leave dancing in the aisles. But how often do we have neither of these things here? We can get bored with the same old thing week in and week out, even when the ministers try make an effort to spice up the worship in one way or another. And we should also remember that our relationship with God is directly linked to how we're feeling about ourselves and about life at any given moment. If we're at odds with ourselves or with life, if we are unwell, suffering the effects of ageing, having traumas in our lives, sickened by what we see happening in the world around us and so on, this will naturally impact on how we feel about God and the church. It can be hard to pray when you're ill or upset. And then we're surrounded by relentless secularism, aren't we? The words God and faith and prayer are rarely heard on TV or read in newspapers. I remember Stephen Fry being interv interviewed on Irish television. And the interviewer asked him what he would say to God. And he said this, brain cancer in a child? How dare you? How dare you create a world so full of injustice and pain? Difficult to maintain our faith when confronted with outbursts like that. We can watch beautiful programmes by the likes of Sir David Attenborough, showing us the startling beauty of God's creation, and yet he never gets a mention. And the church? What about the church, whatever denomination? Can't the church often wear us down with its seeming preoccupation with petty things? Surveys demonstrating time and time again that as our faith grows and we draw closer to Jesus Christ, we can become increasingly disillusioned with the church. And yet we know from history that when the church acts as an activist, it actually grows. But it all too often seems to get lost in the minutiae rather than addressing the huge issues which are worrying us all at the moment. We might be disappointed by God because he doesn't seem to be answering our prayers at the moment. Maybe we're expecting God to perform the extraordinary and we're unhappy when we don't get it. When we're feeling at a low ebb with our faith, it's worth reminding ourselves that we're not alone. When they found the diaries of Mother Teresa, they discovered that she hadn't experienced God in years. They still made her into a saint and losing sight of God didn't stop her from ministering to the sick and the poor and the homeless. The famous Christian writer Henri Nouwen admitted that for him, prayer had become a problem as he got older. And yet he'd written more books on prayer than he can shake a stick at. It's a common problem that God can at times become elusive or even seem absent altogether. Just read some of the Psalms. You'll find them shot through with laments about being abandoned by God. So what do we do about it? Well, I think the first thing to remember is that we matter. That we're important, every single one of us. That we're loved, every single one of us. 
And that we each bring to this world something that no one else can bring. Each one of us brings something to this world that no one else can. You know, if you think about the prodigal son for a moment, when he came home, he found and enjoyed an intimacy with his father that his sinless, self-righteous older brother would never find. I came across a story the other day which really uh, resonated with me. You remember the cartoon character Charlie Brown? He comes to visit his friend Lucy and, and she's in a pretend fortune teller's tent at the local summer fair. So Lucy tells Charlie that life is like a cruise liner. Some people put the deck chairs up at the back of the ship and look back at where they've come from. Others like to pitch up their deck chairs at the front of the ship so they can look ahead at where they're going. But what about you, Charlie Brown, says Lucy? Where on the cruise ship of life do you put your deck chair up? There's a long bemused pause and then Charlie replies, Heck, Lucy, I don't even know how to put my deck chair up. And Mother Superior, Mother Claire, Mary Claire of the Sisters of the Love of God says, and I told this story the last time I preached, when you go before God in prayer, you can't leave anything behind. You carry in your heart every person, every incident, every thought, every feeling you've ever had. And you lay yourself before God. So you bring all the mess as well. And my prayer, she says, is, is really one sentence. Here I am, Lord, what a mess. Don't you just love that prayer? Here I am, Lord. What a mess. It's worth remembering that not once did Jesus scan the room for the best example of holy living and then send that person out to tell others about him. He always sent stumblers and sinners. And I find that really comforting. In fact, in today's reading, we get a good example when his followers, James and John, got it completely wrong even after spending three years with Jesus. And yet they remained his disciples. In fact, if you read the same account in Matthew's gospel, you find that Matthew was so embarrassed about their behaviour that he tells us it's their mother Salome who asked Jesus if they can hold positions of power, deflecting the blame from, their, from her sons. So this is it. This is the life we get here on earth. We get to give away what we receive. We get to believe in each other. We get to forgive and be forgiven. We get to love him perfectly. And we never know what effect it will have for years to come. And all of it, all of it, is completely worth it. And sometimes the fact that there's nothing about you that makes you the right person to do something is exactly what God's looking for. What makes us the saints of God is not our ability to be saintly, but God's ability to work through sinners. And a good question to ask is this, how did Christianity become so tame and respectable when it all began with prostitutes and drunkards and tax collectors? Jesus comes not for the super spiritual, but for the nobly and weak need, who know they don't have it all together, who are not too proud to accept the handout of amazing grace. And as we glance up, we're astonished to find the eyes of Jesus open with wonder, deep with understanding, and gentle with compassion. Amen. Well, thank you for that, David. Very inspiring. Thank you. So as we think about what David has just said, and maybe, I don't know, the story about the deck chair. I don't find it easy to put up a deck chair. So maybe as we think about how difficult it is sometimes to just find our right way through life, let's declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
Do you believe and trust in his son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so now we have our prayers of intercession, and they are led for us this week by Catherine. Let us pray for the church and for the world, and thank God for his goodness. Heavenly Father, open our eyes to your presence. Increase our sense of purpose. Stretch our capabilities. That we may grow in your service to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you, in the unity of your Holy Spirit, are one God forever. Amen. We pray for your church, for all Christian people, for those persecuted because of their faith. Make us a serving church, a giving church, a loving church, and a living church. Bless all who lead our worship. Send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our action, and power to our witness during these times of challenge and change. Help us to listen to you as you show us the way ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we lay before you all the difficulties which plague our world today. Political issues, moral dilemmas, our dreams and prayers for peace, integration, and equality. Our concern for all who share the Earth's resources. Help us to be good stewards and share all that you provide. We pray for the world's poor, for the homeless, the displaced persons, the street dwellers. And we pray for all those striving to help those most in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for our families and friends and neighbours. And for those who have no one to pray for them. For our wider community. For those providing employment. Those who are employed for those with caring responsibilities and our many volunteers. Be a strength to all who are finding life tough at the moment, those with difficult decisions to make, employment, financial problems, broken relationships. Make us sensitive to one another and to each other's needs. And we pray for all ill in body, mind and spirit. Surround all with comfort and reassurance. Let them know of your love and care for them. So in a moment of quiet, let's just pray for those on our hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And remember those who have died, those who have been present in our lives, but are now at peace in your heavenly kingdom. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as winter approaches, we are truly blessed by our vaccination programmes for COVID, influenza and malaria. For all our frontline and key workers. And we pray for ourselves. As you have called us, make us worthy of our calling. Keep us mindful of your love and provision for us. As your love touches us, may we reflect that love in our words and actions this week. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, thank you for those lovely prayers, Catherine. And now we come to the peace. And as always, when we share the peace, we think about all those people who we want to know the peace of Christ, the peace of God in their hearts. So as we think about them, we, let's share the peace together. Christ is our peace. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So now we're going to sing our second song, our second hymn, and this week we're singing Meekness and Majesty. So let's sing this together. prayer our holy communion uh, and as always I will take the bread and wine on your behalf and as I do that I just ask you to pray that Jesus will come into your heart as if you were taking this for yourself the Lord is here 
His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. On the night he was handed over, Jesus had a meal with his friends. He took a loaf of bread and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine and after giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, remember me. And so now our Lord's Prayer is led by members of our congregations. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your will be done, done on earth as, as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, sins as we as forgive we those, those who sin against, against us. us. Lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed the body of Christ, broken for us all. Amen. The blood of Christ, shed for us all. Amen. So let's say this prayer together. God, our creator, thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, whose love pursues us our whole life long. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your life to us in word and deed, even unto death, even death on a cross. Come, Holy Spirit, feed us with your love, that we may be filled with power to love God with all our hearts and souls and minds. Amen. So now we come to our final hymn, and our final hymn this week is Christ Triumphant. Let's sing this together. Oh, 
Wonderful hymn to go out on, isn't it? Wonderful. Uh, so this week, uh, notices. The notices are that next week, our service online will be a morning worship service, and it's going to be led by members of our worship team at South Crossland. So it'll be a little bit different, um, and I hope you will join us and enjoy it. I'm sure it'll be wonderful. Um, other than that, I don't think I've got any other notices at the moment. So we come to our blessing, and this week we're going to have our Rutter blessing, but we're going to have the John Rutter Rutter blessing. Um, so let's sing this together.
Wonderful. I know we all love that one. So as our service comes to an end, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. So have a great week, whatever you're doing. Please do stay safe. Coronavirus is still out there, so be careful, please. And I hope you enjoy our closing song, and I'll see you again next week. Bye for now. Bye. Oh. Uh -huh.